Hi, welcome to the third session of Voices from the Field. I'm Florian Reuter, I'm a financial risk consultant at Deloitte, and in this session we'll be looking into the use of loss given default. So three questions we'll be focusing on. One is, where do we use loss given default? Second, how is the market interpreting LGD? And third, how is the regulator viewing the use of LGD? Okay, let's start. Well, let's start with where do we use loss given default? There's a number of examples we can look at. So in this MOOC, we're concentrating more on the capital side, on IRB models. So we're looking at regulatory capital calculations. But also economic capital is an important use of LGD, which we also use in risk adjusted return on capital calculations. Another important part is we want to use LGD in our pricing. Another part is provisioning. Lots of provisioning is model based where we use LGD estimates. So loan loss provisioning. And last but not least, we want to use LGD to distinguish our good and bad clients. So PD is one of the drivers we'll be looking at for good and bad distinction, but loss given default is also a very important component. Special asset management process also takes into account LGD estimates. So we can already see when we develop LGD models, it's of utmost importance to keep in mind what the intended use is. So let's get back to one of the examples we looked at in the previous session of Voices from the Field. So we looked at the future of IRB and one of the examples we looked at was the huge variation between risk weights for defaulted residential mortgage loans. So in this chart, we see on the left hand side, we see risk weights of 300%, while on the right hand side, we see a risk weight of zero. So there's a huge variation. So we're looking at defaulted assets. So a very obvious reason for these um, differences is of course the definition of default. Differences in definition of default, different interpretations. Another driver, and that's what we're looking at in this session, is LGD. So what we see in the market is there's lots of different interpretations for defaulted exposures when we want to develop loss given default models. So huge variation. Now let's take a, a step back. So we want to look at LGD. So a very simplified example. We can look at the performing exposure going to default and a default can result into a loss. So a probability of default, that's an estimate of the probability that a client goes from performing to defaulted. So probability of default, the default occurs, and then we want to know, once a default occurs, how much loss can, can I expect? So the loss given default is the ratio of loss on the exposure resulting from a default. So there's already three components. One, how do we define a loss? What do we consider as a loss? How large is the exposure? And third, what is the definition of default we're using? So these three components already drive the estimate for LGD and define what LGD we're looking at. Now a closer look at LGD. We can look at performing LGDs, but also defaulted LGDs. So from a performing perspective, we want to estimate the LGD for a client that is performing. So it hasn't defaulted yet. So we only have pre-default information. Once a client defaulted, we have more information. We have up-to-date default information. We know in what stage of the default process the client is. So this is information we want to take into account. So for example, the time already in default could drive the LGD estimate. But very important also is the stage in which is the, the default stage of the client. This all drives the loss. So we're looking at the domain of an exposure. It can be either performing or defaulted. We can also look at the range so maybe we want to know the expected losses, or maybe we want to know the unexpected losses. So there's already multiple purposes of LGD. So we already looked at the domain. We can either look at a performing where we only know pre-default information, or we can look at a defaulted stage where we know post-default information. From the range side, we could be interested in expected losses or unexpected losses. For example, provisioning, you're more interested in expected losses, or for capital purposes, you want to know what the unexpected loss is. Now, what's regulation saying? 
Actually, there's only a few articles we can look at. There's only a few articles that really say something about unexpected losses, for example. So for LGD, we're looking at economic downturn, but it's not clearly defined what we consider as economic downturn. For the domain side, we're looking at defaulted exposures. So is there more information? Well, there's only a few articles we can rely on, but there's not much information. This is one of the topics that was highlighted in the future of IRB. So the future of IRB already says we'll be looking much more into defaulted assets. There'll, there'll be more guidance on how to model defaulted exposures and how should we consider an economic downturn in our LGD models. So the regulation, it leaves a lot of room for interpretation, but it's moving towards more harmonization. Let's go into some more detail for a default process. This is a default process. It's a bit simplified, but it's very illustrative. So first, going from performing to default. This is the do domain side we already looked at. So we're looking at performing going to default. So it's an LGD estimate with pre-default information. And the LGD estimate is for a default at start of default. Now the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is the default process. A default process usually ends up in either litigation or no litigation. And the no litigation part is something that usually happens when the, within the first couple of months. So roughly 50% of the defaults could result into a cure. So a cure means returning to the performing state. The, the cure rate usually decreases rapidly. So within the first couple of months, the probability of a cure to occur goes down rapidly. Now for the litigation part. The litigation, this could mean restructuring or recovery. A recovery could mean there's multiple recoveries of collateral. So there's not just, so for example, for a mortgage, you'd have just one house, one recovery, but for corporate loans, you may have multiple recoveries. So both for the cure side and for the recovery side, it could be interesting to look at survival analysis. So survival analysis is, is a very hot topic in LGD modeling right now and the use of survival analysis is, is something we'll be looking into in the next voices of the field. So to wrap it up, LGD is used for multiple purposes. There's not just one LGD and it's very important to keep in mind what is the intended use when you're developing an LGD model. Two, the market is interpreting LGD in very different ways and this has resulted in large variations of RWAs. Three, the regulator is working towards harmonization. This is what we're seeing in the future of IRB. More guidance is what we're expecting. Thanks for watching and see you in the next clip of Voices from the Field. Goodbye.